want to get in the car. Yeah, Isabella. In August, you'll be starting school. You'll be having to do the same thing. You'll have the same thing as me, but you're gonna have to do a even harder thing. I think we're doing a really cool thing with Sophie taking her to Providence. It is a university model school. So she goes to school two days at this like Christian based school. And then my wife homeschools her for two days and it gives the kid the best of both worlds and the parent the best of both worlds where you get to spend more time with the child but then the child also gets a lot of social interactions and the structure that they need. Being able to reimagine the status quo, and I'm just a big believer on that. The past hundred years we've been doing school where it's like eight to five, five days a week. And I think it can just be done more efficiently and differently without the student suffering. Cut off the excess fat, as I always say in business, get straight to the meat and potatoes, Get what you need to do, get it done, and get out. Reimagine what's possible. Like owning a Greek restaurant in Texas. I don't really like for, for appetizer, but I mean, I, we can make a dinner, dinner plate. So what all do you do? You just fry the shrimp and then put Spartan sauce? Uh, yeah, I put um, beer butter with flour, you know, like, and then I, and I marinate with uh, calamari flour too. Okay. And then I make a Spartan sauce with a little, a little bit extra spicy uh, hot sauce. Okay. And I mix it and I mix it all together. It's really, it's really. So it's fried good. and then it has the, the stuff on it. Yes. Okay. Come on. All right, honey, let's go. Let's go. I'm sorry. Those of you who have been watching the channel long enough know that I make dog food for my wife at the restaurant. And it's like chicken breast, broccoli and brown rice and carrots. And like we kind of chop that up, give it a light puree. And then my wife scoops it into the dog bowls and mixes it with dry food. Something that's like totally like beyond my scope of reasoning to take care of animals at such a high level. But I was thinking the shrewd businessman that I am, is there a niche market for like organic handmade dog food that I could market and sell to the public? That's just, that's just how my mind is always working. You see this stretch, you got it. This fits so good, you flung it. How you get so iconic. I see you, babe. Can't wait for later. My favorite flavor. Like the lifesaver. Mmm, can't get enough of you. Come on and show what you want. Okay, we gotta talk about something that has impacted both of us. Even if you don't eat at my Greek restaurants, you know that the cost of these guys right here has gone up tremendously. Here's why. In 2022, there was this outbreak of like the bird flu and it contaminated so many farms. And that coupled with the cost of inflation, meaning 
this crate now costs more money to purchase and the travel expense to get these eggs from the farm to the grocery store or in my case to my restaurant has gone up and that has led to an increase of nearly 50 percent in the case of eggs i think at the grocery store a dozen of eggs used to cost like two bucks and now they're at four bucks depending on the brand i've seen them go as high as eight dollars for a dozen eggs at the grocery store depending on the farm the variety free range organic all those things but eight dollars for a dozen eggs like that is insane how does the average home pay for those things and for me as a business owner like how is that sustainable whenever that's what I do is make my money on the margin of what I pay for the food versus what I sell the food for. Unfortunately, that lands us here. It's not just the eggs though. It's the beef, the dairy, the chicken, the seafood, the dry goods. I mean, we're talking plasticware, to-go boxes, all the things that are required to keep this business up and running. And it has led me to do this price increase that I have pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. Know that as a small mom and pop business owner that has relationships with each and every one of my customers, it's not something that I wanna do I would absorb all the costs if I could. And I have been, I haven't raised prices in a year and a half. And I've just been like swallowing this inflation and it's like destroying the bottom line. Like we're packed and we're, we're paying all of our bills and we're looking at the accounts and we're like, where's the money? And inflation has eaten it all up. And I think you're seeing that as well, probably in your personal lives, it's like, I work so hard and, I, and I'm doing all the things right, but I have nothing to show for it. It's like that inflation is just, it's like a silent killer. It's, it's really sad. So I am going to, to put a lot of that on my shoulders and pass off just a little bit to the end consumer because I don't want to make it to where you can't eat out and enjoy having good Greek food. If, if you go back and look at prices at Sam's Club and Costco a year ago, I think that they are taking advantage of the situation and gouging uh, the customers. And I just, I can't do that. I'm not in my good conscience sit there and say, oh, inflation, let me just go up on my prices double. Like that's just not who I am or, and who I ever will be. It's for your hermana también. Okay. Two for you and two for your hermana. It's small. Small? Or, no, it's small here, too. Okay. Mira, mira más. Okay. I, yeah, I think it's in quattro small, yeah. Okay. Jose, are you extra large? L. Extra? XL? No, L. L? Solo L? Flaquito. <laughs> no mames. L? L. En serio? Yes. 